What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go through the categories and nominees for the Game Awards 2022. I've been doing this the last couple years. I want to make this year the biggest and best year yet. So we're going to look through each one that I care about. I am going to skip some of them, like the eSports and, and whatnot. Uh, but we're going to go through, and what I normally do is I pick what would win based off them, because most of the vote comes down to the journalists, right? So what would they pick from these? And then also what I think should win. Now, I haven't finished God of War Ragnarok. That seems to probably be the only one. There are some games I haven't played this year. So there might be some times, you know, we have to kind of acknowledge that. And final thing, I like to use these kind of things to shout out that I'm not really in full support of how the, the awards go for the Game Awards. I think it's very, very stupid that you, you cut it off at a certain time. In fact, a few years ago, they cut it off after Smash Bros. came out, which was in December, because they wanted that game to count. Whereas this year, December 2nd, Callisto Protocol, Midnight Suns, at least Callisto could really stand a chance at being some of these, you know, some of these uh, uh, nominations. So it's just all subjective. They choose when they want to cut it off. I think that's really, really stupid. And I think if a game comes out in 2022, it should be considered for awards, the 2022 Game Awards. I get when they do it, it's December 8th, but I say just delay it a few weeks, and then that way you can include every game that comes out. That's just my opinion. And final, final, final thing, I will be co-streaming this live. So if you guys want to watch it live in a few weeks, you can come to this channel. All right, let's go through. So let's go through backwards here. Let's start with the most anticipated game. So we got Final Fantasy, Hogwarts, Resident Evil, Starfield, Legend of Zelda. All right, well, obviously what I would choose would be Hogwarts Legacy. Remember, this is based off of them. We're going to go based off what I think and what also they think. So I would vote Hogwarts. I think it's going to be Resident Evil 4. I, I can't see, like Starfield, I could see Legend of Zelda. I can't see. I can't see journalists voting for Hogwarts because of obvious reasons. Um, but so I'm going to go, I'm going to guess Resident Evil 4 for that one. We're going to go to best debut indie next. So we got Neon White, Norco, Stray, Tunic, Vampire Survivors. All right, so <laughs> this, is, this is a little unfair. I've only played Stray. I've only played Stray. So I would vote for Stray. I honestly, here's the thing though. I do think Stray or Tunic would win from them as well. So I'll say Stray for both i think they'll pick stray um, as well multiplayer cod modern warfare 2 multiverses overwatch splatoon uh, tmnt all right so i didn't play cod i did play multiverses didn't play overwatch did play splatoon did play tmnt so for me to be honest with you it'd be splatoon i think splatoon has an incredible multiplayer just in general um However, if we're going based off their vote, I think Call of Duty is going to win it. I, I mean, Call of Duty, you know, took the world by storm. This year's was more popular than, than most years in all, right? So I would think Call of Duty would win that, but I would vote Splatoon personally. We're going to skip best sports slash racing. Nobody cares. Best sim slash strategy at Dune. Mario Rabbids, Total War, Warhammer, Two Point Campus, Victoria Three. All right, again, I've only played Two Point Campus, so based on uh, you know defaulting there, I would say that one. In terms of what they would pick, though, I I, I feel like Mario Rabbids probably right. Mario Rabbids has always been kind of looked at as like an underrated gem, so that one probably wins uh, theirs. Best Family, Kirby, Lego Star Wars, Mario, Switch Sports, Splatoon 3. So Nintendo just kind of you know sweeps this entire thing. Oh, man, this one's actually pretty tough. So for me, I mean, I played Lego Star Wars with my daughter. I played Kirby with my daughter. I played Nintendo Switch Sports with my daughter. And I went back and forth with Splatoon 3 with my daughter. So I actually think Switch Sports. I think it just it, it captures the original feel. Um, not as well, I think, as you know the Wii Sports, but... If we're going based off that, at least for me, and we're just you're just voting based off family game, playing it with somebody else, I probably have the most fun playing Switch Sports uh, with family in terms of what they would pick. I would argue probably Lego Star Wars. I think Lego Star Wars or Splatoon could be something that they pick uh, on that one. Best fighting. So out of all of these, again, I've only played these last two, Multiverses and Sifu. Sifu better win. But for me, it definitely wins. For them, it also better win. So I would say Sifu. Best role playing. So Triangle Strategy, I've actually heard some incredible things from. I, okay, I mean, Elden Ring's got to kind of sweep it, right? I think Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3, across all of these nominations, may win a couple things. But I think Elden Ring is going to kind of sweep. So for me, I've actually only played, I mean, my wife played Pokemon. I would probably say Elden Ring, and I think that's going to be the, the vote of the journalists as well. 
All right, best action adventure. Combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. So I, I definitely want to keep that in mind, right? Plague Tale, God of War, Horizon, Stray, Tunic. I, I mean, I, I think God of War is probably going to sweep almost everything that it's in the category. So if I'm going to say their vote, I would say God of War. My vote, oh man, combat. I, I think probably God of War as well. See, the, the thing is, I love Plague Tale to death. I really, really do. Does it do combat with puzzle solving well? I think puzzle solving, it's better than God of War. I think combat, though, God of War is the best by a lot. I think out of all of these. Horizon would be, you know, a close three, but Stray is really small. I mean, this is really these four, pretty close. But I would probably vote God of War, and I think God of War would probably win it um, as well. Best action game, good to see Bayonetta. Bayonetta 3, COD, Neon White, Sifu, TMNT. I would say Sifu. And, you know, the thing is, when do I think some of these games would actually, like, win it, right? So, like, COD is going to win Best Multiplayer. I, I just can't see that it wouldn't. So, would they have it win Best Action Game as well? I don't know why God of War isn't on here because that doesn't really make any sense. Let's see, again, this is why these things are overall stupid, but they are fun to uh, kind of predict. So, I don't know. I mean, would COD do both? I'd like to say they'd vote for something else. TMNT was like a, a sleeper hit, kind of. But, and again, Sifu. I hope Sifu wins like one thing. So maybe Sifu, but also maybe COD. Um, yeah, let's just, I don't care. VR, AR. Uh, innovation and accessibility. We can cover this. This is actually pretty cool. As Dusk Falls, God of War, Return to Monkey Island, Last of Us Part 1, The Quarry. All right, so... Oh, man. You know, I think the accessibility options in As Dusk Falls is actually really good. I think The Last of Us, though, right? I didn't play it, but from... I mean, they literally did, like, a developer diary kind of thing on all of the things that this game does for accessibility. So, it kind of is, like, the leader in the field right now, I would argue. Um, previously, before that, was probably The Last of Us Part 2. So, I think I think The Last of Us will probably win that one. I, that's probably the one I would pick as well. Uh, best community support. Do we want to do this? Well, community... Uh, outstanding community support, transparency, responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity, and game updates patches. Oh, so which one kind of stays around? Um, well, without playing literally any of them, No Man's Sky, I love the story of No Man's Sky. Fortnite always dominates, though, right? So they would probably uh, vote Fortnite. Although Final Fantasy, like, this game kills it. Go to best indie. Um, so out of these, I, I, I gotta say, I mean, these two games, and Tunic, Tunic I really gotta play, because Tunic has been, there's a lot of nice things said about Tunic, but for me, I've only played, you know, these two, Sifu Stray. I do think Sifu is the better game of the two. Um, maybe this is where it wins, right? So, like, if, if Sifu has to win only one, and it doesn't win the other ones, where would it win? I think this one would do it. So, I would personally vote Sifu, and I, I would think they would too. Uh, best ongoing game. This is kind of the same development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience. This is the same thing as the other one. So, this is kind of stupid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, again, I probably, I don't know, should I switch it up? Genshin Impact stays around, but I just don't see the same kind of talk as... Like, Fortnite, obviously, is so big. I'm going to say Fortnite again. Uh, kind of stupid that it would do that. Games for impact. Uh, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. All right. Well, again, the only game I've played is As Dusk Falls. So, that's what I would pick there. Okay. This, I'm so... Let me stop here. I'm so happy about this. So happy about this one. Because I think they actually nailed this right here. So, you got Ashley Birch. Uh, you got Charlotte. You got Christopher. And uh, you got the rest. And to be honest with you, I'm sorry, you two. You're out. So, for me, uh, for me, it's Charlotte for a Plague Tale. And I, I said this. Now, I haven't beaten. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, I'm probably, I have, like, 30% left of the story of God of War Ragnarok. So there is still, like, the ending. And I know people were, like, crying at the ending and all this stuff of God of War. And Christopher Judge does such a phenomenal job as Kratos. I'm not taking anything away from him. But I think, you know, in terms of just something that kind of stands out is different, I got to go Plague Tale. Because uh, Charlotte just freaking crushed it as Amicia in that game. The thing is, if I was the journal, or if I'm thinking as the journalists do, and that means you kind of have like half a brain, I do. Th I feel like Ashley Birch may win. I, I really do. I think. I think all three of these kind of have almost an equal shot of winning. I could see. Here's what I'll say. I can see this. This would be one that I laugh at if they pick Ashley. She was good. She was good. But Aloy is not even close to to Amicia and Kratos. Aloy is not even the same category of character development or acting or anything. So I'd say these two, I'd pick her, maybe the journalists pick him. 
which is okay. Best audio design, COD, Elden Ring, God of War, Gran Turismo, Horizon. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. God of War is actually a little spotty. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I, maybe I'm nitpicking so much in God of War, although I really do love it quite a bit. It's uh, it's probably tied for my game of the year. But God of War does have some really weird, like sometimes they mess up in the audio. So I don't know, maybe this is where Horizon wins it because Horizon does have really good music. It has really good sounds, right? The machines have really cool sounds to them. So I, I think actually in terms of sound design, I, I would probably pick Horizon and them... Again, I mean, these two games are here, right? <laughs> so does that make it immediate that the, the one of them wins? Maybe. Best score in music. All right, so that, for this one's easy for me. I saw this one actually live when they announced it. I would pick Plague Tale, I think, easily. God of War's music at its best is incredible. Is really good. God of War's music at its best matches Plague Tale. But God of War also is, is pretty quiet at times, and the music is not consistent enough. Enough to win for me. For me. So I'm I would vote Plague Tale without question. Without question, I think Plague Tale has the best music. Metal Hell Singer is actually pretty good too. In terms of them, oh god. I mean, I want to think they would also pick the best one, the one that's arguably, <laughs> you know, the best one. So maybe Plague Tale, but I don't know. This could also be an Elden Ring thing where Elden Ring wins it from them. Best art direction, uh, Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon, Scorn, Stray. This one's tough because I, I, I think, I actually think all five of them, like Scorn is so weird and so different. Personally, it's not for me. So like I would just toss it out of there, but the journalists may think different, right? So for me, it's actually kind of tough because the art direction in Elden Ring is awesome, but I also love it in these other, you know, Stray, God of War, Horizon. So I don't know. I would probably, man, I may pick Horizon or Stray. Maybe mine, but yet again, God of War. I mean, I would probably pick Horizon or Stray. Them, this probably comes down to Horizon, or this probably comes, sorry, I'm using my mouse right. Elden Ring or God of War. That's probably where it comes down for them. Um, I, I would think that. Best narrative. All right, so this one I, I can't really choose, right? I can't really pick because I haven't finished God of War. So right now, best narrative would be Playtale would be Playtale. I haven't beaten the last 30% of God of War. So for them, it's going to be God of War. I th I, I just think Playtale is going to, even even if, I mean, well, God of War could be better, right? I mean, I, I don't know that yet. But say say Plague Tale was actually a better narrative than God of War, I still think they pick God of War. That's That would be my prediction there. Best game direction awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. See, Plague Tale should be here. I don't actually know why it's not. Um, this one's tough because, like, I, I think Elden Ring. I think I would vote Elden Ring, and I think that that would be the vote from them as well. God of War is tough because it is so good, and it's, like, the better version of 2018. And for the love of God, I'm not talking about the DLC arguments, but does it necessarily innovate? Does it do anything massively, massively new? No, a lot of it stemmed from, or at least, like, the core was built in 2018, and it's just better now. Everything everything is better and more enhanced in Ragnarok, uh, so is it necessarily new? Now, you could argue maybe the same thing for Elden Ring, but I, because they're just taking the Soulsborn formula and putting it in op in, into an open world. But the open world thing is still relatively different, right? Whereas God of War, it's not. So I, I do think by that logic, Elden Ring would win theirs as well. Game of the year. So for me, it's Plague Tale. I've said that before. God of War, if I beat it, or when I beat it, I'm going to beat it. But if it's, you know, good, and, you know, that, that'll be the deciding thing, the ending of the game. Um, because right now, where it's at, they're about equal and Plague Tale is just you know slightly above it so if God of War sticks the ending for me personally I would then pick God of War but right now I pick Plague Tale I, I can't imagine them not picking Elden Ring I think Elden Ring will win it um I think both of these you know could do, I think all of them I mean Stray is actually kind of weird I would have preferred Sifu Sifu I would have preferred over Stray because I do think Sifu is a better game Stray is really good I actually really enjoyed Stray but I think Sifu is a better game so this one I wouldn't even have in general this game I've heard you know obviously incredible Xenoblade incredible things on but I didn't play it and Horizon, you know, Horizon would maybe win Game of the Year in a different year. It's just up against, you know, bigger, or well, not bigger games necessarily. Playtale is not bigger, but uh, better. Yeah, honestly, in my opinion, better games. So I pick a Plague Tale right now. 
that could switch to God of War. And uh, in terms of what they would pick, I, I do think Elden Ring would be the one. So that's it. That was fun. And that was a little bit different than what I normally do. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What, uh, you know, what categories are you interested in? What games you think you're going to win? Again, I'll be co-streaming it live. So we'll watch the whole thing live. And I'm going to do my own game of the year. I'm actually going to rank uh, every single game, new game that I've played this year. So I'm going to do my own version of a game of the year. It's going to be an epic, very, very long ranking video uh, closer to Christmas. At, towards like the very end of December. So that's what I'm going to do. And maybe it'll be better than the Game Awards. Personally, I, I hope it is. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turned on. All my social media is in the description if you guys want to click there and you know, follow me elsewhere. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all on the next one.